but we need to build houses and and the bank of canada knows that and they are you know if they drop if they drop interest rates too much drive prices houses up too much it'll drive the prices of homes too much all those ones that go to the landlord tenant board they're they're going to have a hard time finding a place they're going to end up mm -hmm. they are not going to end up paying and and you know you still can go collections after them and and if you file a, a collection after them uh that collection stays stays with you forever until you pay it so and it, when you want to get a cell phone or a car maybe get on your feet or anything to say hey listen you got a collection of ten thousand dollars this is the highest interest rates we've had in probably 25 years i mean you, like if you did the average it's been under four percent for a long time if they averaged it out over over a 20-year period so we got to get under that under four percent three and a half to three point seven five percent interest rates that's where it's going to get people to come back. And that's that's a good norm. Uh, but even 6% was not bad, but because the housing prices are so hot, listen to this episode. Hello, everyone. This is Rob Golfie with Remax, the Golfie team. Welcome to the Golfie Real Estate Show, Hamilton Edition with host Rick Zamprin. Yeah, good morning. Happy weekend, one and all. We're talking a lot about real estate today because, yes, today is the Golfie Real Estate Show, Hamilton Edition on 900 CHML. Some of the things on the docket today, including overbidding in some Hamilton neighborhoods. We'll get into Ontario housing starts, the government not seeing the numbers it wants to see. And Rob's got a couple of doozy stories for you. But before we get to any of that, I want to remind you that if you are looking to sell your house, you're in the market to buy a home, maybe you're an investor, maybe you want to get into your first home, you got to call the number one REMAX team in Canada. That is the Golfie team. The phone number is 905 Five seven five seventy seven hundred. You can also visit the website robgolfi.com. That's Rob G O L F I dot com. And because social media is such a huge, th huge thing these days, check out the Golfi team on Facebook, X, Instagram, Threads, and TikTok as well. Let's begin as we usually do in talking about the real estate life that was this past week for Rob Golfi. So for the past, I guess, number of years, two years at least, the premier of this province, Doug Ford, has said, listen, we need to build a lot more homes. And he's not wrong. The, the problem is the goal that the province has set might be unattainable. One and a half million homes over 10 years were well off the pace. Uh, for example, last month, Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation said in June of 2023, 10,114 new homes were started in Ontario. Last month, that number was 5,600, well off the pace. Rob, what is going on? Is, is it high interest rates being blamed? High interest rates and the cost uh, with with the municipalities of, of building these houses. People people are not going to commit to something and, and buy something uh, new, uh, especially if it's a year from now, uh, which is a good idea. I mean, but people are afraid to take the risk. But but we need to build houses. And, and the Bank of Canada knows that. And they are, you know, if they drop if they drop interest rates too much, drive prices houses up too much. It'll drive the prices of homes too much. And uh, and everybody's going to jump in. And, and, and then we're going to have the same problem that we had in 2021 and 22. But uh, but yeah, our housing starts are, are terrible and, and we're never going to meet the goal and immigration is still happening. There's pe flood, people flooding into this country and no place to to live. And uh, and and they're looking at it. They're coming here and they go, whoa, um, we've got it's expensive to live here, not only just to rent, but to buy. And and it, it, it's going to it's going to affect the, the, the housing market. I'm, like I said, the housing market is going to boom and and just be prepared for it. So if you don't own a house now, just get in one and, and see if you can get your name on something right now, because you're going to end up paying probably one hundred to two hundred thousand dollars more for the house uh, in, in the next couple of years, uh, whatever the same house that you're in. So just uh, the government. And you know what? And Doug Ford, you know, they're blaming him. Uh, you know, about the housing starts. He really can't control it. The only thing they can control is the interest rates, right? They can control that. That's what's going to make the difference. And, you know, we like we, we've we had, this is the highest interest rates we've had in probably 25 years. I mean, you, like if you did the average, it's been under 4% for a long time if they averaged it out over, over a 20 year period. So we got to get under that under 4%, three and a half to 3.75% interest rates. That's where it's going to get people to come back, and that's that's a good norm. Uh, but even six percent was not bad. But because the housing prices are so high, that's what makes it difficult. 
but yeah, mm-hmm. definitely they've got to they've got to build more houses. Otherwise, it's going to be tough out there for uh, a lot of young people uh, that are fi- you know finishing school, especially in the next uh, few years. And they're going to go to college, yeah. university. Then after that, they're going to start looking for homes. One of the big issues is amongst many, I mean, there's, there's many layers to this is that developers and there's some of them who want to build, but they're looking at the return on investment and say, just doesn't make any sense. But part of that is they then sit on their parcel of land for years. And and yeah, it takes years to get all these permits set. We know that going in, but it takes years for them to, you know, pull the trigger on it. And the province has said, whether it's the new housing minister or the previous one, you know, we're, we're going to have to, you know, implement something to the to the effect of use it or lose it. Unless you're building on the land, you might have to be forced to give it up or sell it to another developer who will build. Do you see that playing out? Do you see that happening in, I, in the future? I don't see that happen playing out because all those big, large developers, they're – you know they, they they all got the premier's phone number in their in their phone so they could say believe <laughs> yeah, me i you're right. i i know that is uh and uh that that's not going that's not going to happen but uh, but they do need to do something about the cost of developing for for these developers, and so they can pass that savings on to the consumer when they're buying. But it hasn't happened yet, and uh, and that's why everybody's sitting. It's it's just everybody's scared. The the developers, listen, they've got they've got so much money tied up in uh, in in real estate right now. Now, and developers, and here's how it works with these developers. So as they're building. They're, they got cash flow coming in, which is helping mm-hmm. paying for the properties that they've had, you know, sitting there, uh, paying the financing and everything else. Because listen, when you buy raw land and you got to finance it, there's no there's no money coming in, unless yeah. you're unless unless you're selling houses. And so these developers, they're feeling they're feeling the pain because they're paying a lot of a lot of interest uh, uh, on properties that are just sitting there without building any houses. So they're go- they're going into their reserve, their bank, and paying this and trying to stay afloat. And then, and they're 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 feeling it. They're feeling the pinch. And so they need, uh, but they need they need to change that. They, the developers they're not going to jump in now as fast as they did before. They're they're going to have to change a lot of things, and it's gonna it's gonna take a while. It's gonna, we're we're gonna be behind for at least another 20 years. Let's talk about overbidding in Hamilton. Apparently there are some homes, some neighborhoods where overbidding is a factor. There was a recent analysis that shows the average home in 18% of the local neighborhoods sold at above asking between April and June, and that's up from 7% in the first quarter of the year. Just 6% of local neighborhoods' uh, homes sold at median asking price between April and June, that compares to 4% in the previous quarter. And 76%, the overwhelming majority of neighborhoods remain in underbidding territory. Are you surprised that 18% of the neighborhoods are above overbidding or, or overbidding? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, they're full price or more, for sure. I'm, <clears throat> I'm totally su- totally surprised at that. But those are the people that listed their houses at the right price and uh and and they got more money so let's you know like i said if, if the house is worth seven hundred thousand and they listed at 699.9 they're gonna get they're gonna get activity on it there was a house that <clears throat> a client called me on and uh they said rob what about this house and i looked at it and i said wow that was that was a good that seemed like a, a fair price they got an offer right away it was sold within within a week and uh and they got full price for it and because it was priced right and uh, I, I've been watching this one one listing, and uh, it it they, I guess the uh, seller canceled the listing with the agent. This is one I went on like like November, October last year, October November. Still hasn't sold. They're chasing the market. They're chasing the mm-hmm. market, and um, and 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 it and they they just don't understand it. And if they actually listened, they would have got a higher amount just based on history. Now that we can see. And, and like, like I said, you, you, you want the person that's got the most experience and has got the most intel, like, uh, intel when it comes to information of, of the online uh, and, and things. And I live it and work it. So I know what's going on. And I know when people make a mistake and I say that this is, I can almost, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm you know, a, a genius at this, but I'm going to say I've been at this for a while. And I, I can almost predict what, what the outcome is going to be when people put their house up for sale and, and the direction it's going to go if they don't follow, follow you know, what my advice would be. But, but we, we will list at their, at their number. We will do it and we'll try 
but the way the market is now, it, 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 I'm pretty pretty close to accurate. When it's moving up uh, fast, it's it's hard to gauge what the market's going to do for your house. It, it does it usually help, it, it does a lot better than what you think it is. And same thing when it's on its way down. You like you know you got to try to catch it before it goes you know beyond uh, going down, and so you're not chasing it all the time. So yeah. it's and, and this analysis was yeah this analysis was uh, you know home prices or, or homes that sold between April and June. And when you look at the, the, you know, the stats that we referenced earlier in the show in Hamilton, the April to June average price, $748,000, January, February, March, 736. Now, what we don't have is the comparison to what they were listed at, but certainly the home prices, homes were selling for more in that April to June period compared to the first three months of the year. Yeah, no, I know. It's, it's just, it, it, it's it's insane how the, the, this market works, but uh, but we we've we've sold a lot of houses over asking and uh, in in those time frames, and uh, it just it's just basically pricing it right. That's a pricing it right, yeah. and 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 they will always outperform the, the next person. The next person will try to go higher on their price, and then they end up end up selling a lot less than what the, their neighbor did uh, because they, were, they they figured, oh, my house is better than my neighbor's house. They got 700,000. I should get 750 or 800. And meanwhile, they end up getting 650 for it. So it, they actually, it actually backfired on them uh, how they uh, priced their home. Just got 90 seconds to talk about our final topic. And this is short-term rentals. And there was a report that shows that the total number of short-term rental units in Canada grew by 60% between 2017 and 2023. In 2017, there was just shy of 59,000. By 2023, that number topped 107,000, which is certainly, you know, causing a bit of strain in the housing market. Those short-term rentals could be used for housing. Absolutely, you know, and I saw that. It's incredible. It, it went up. But you know what? That's the government uh, making it difficult with the landlord-tenant boards. That's why people are going to short-term rentals. Why, yeah, why, why, right. why go long-term rentals when you know you can have people coming in and out, and you're making more money uh, on a house? Like sometimes you can get, collect maybe twenty five hundred dollars a month on a long-term rental, but on a short-term rental, you could almost get four thousand dollars a month. You know, if you're renting it, you know, five days a week, and uh, so there's. A bit, there, there is a big difference and uh and and, and there you go like they've got to make things easier for uh landlords and owners of properties to like if you have a bad tenant hey you're out that's it that's the way it is but you know but if but now there and, and that's just going to keep increasing and um and and you know now you know airbnbs out there you, you know you can get some good deals going on but there you go that's our government you know trying to fix things but they make things worse Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I agree with you. I think it's only going to get worse from here on in. People don't want to deal with the landlord tenant board. They'll just do short term and, and more of our potential housing will be out the window. So you have a story about a negotiation tactic that may not have gone according to plan. Yeah, so there was a, a, a client of mine. He had a tenant in one of his townhouses on uh, the Hamilton Mountain. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the the tenants really did, did a, like a horrible job with uh, housekeeping in the, in the house. They had dogs and just going to the washroom everywhere. And it was just terrible. Uh -huh. And, uh, so basically the, the, uh, the owner of the, of the, uh, townhouse said, listen, uh, like he wanted an amount, you wanted to renovate it and get, get it sold. And it cost him, uh, $13,000 to, uh, to get him out of there. And, uh, originally the, the tenants wanted 20 and, and, uh, it, you know, it's, it's getting pretty ridiculous, uh, for that. But I mean, it's like a short-term little lottery for these tenants when they when they negotiate that kind of that kind of money. But I think it's just kind of an unfair um, for the landlord to have to pay out not only to pay them out to to leave, but have to clean up and renovate because of the of, of all the damage they did. And uh, and uh, yeah, they're just uh, you know, and that's happening a lot everywhere now. People are buying. Uh, corporations are buying apartment buildings based on paying people out. Like, so let's say, you know, you got a hundred unit building and uh, you got to, you got to, uh, you're going to buy that building if, if all the rents are low or there, or everything's, you know, needs work, they're going to base. Okay. Well, we're going to pay $10,000 per tenant uh, to, to leave. And so they calculate that within the price of the building almost just because they know it's going to take time to get rid of those tenants. And, uh, and now, now basically part of, part of, uh, having tenants leave, you have to negotiate 
money, which which is crazy. And and it's and it's because of the uh, of the landlord tenant boards are so far behind. And you know, there's either you wait nine ten months to to get to have them leave so you can sell a house, or or you pay them and say here here's your money as soon as you walk out the door we change the locks you, you get your check right there but um but yeah it's uh it's it's crazy and we're seeing more and more of that where people have to pay uh landlords have to pay out uh, tenants to, to leave and uh but anyway what are you going to do that's just the way our society is now and it's going to get worse and worse as time goes on I, I get the sense that we're going to see fewer and fewer mom and pop landlords because they're just not going to want to deal with this. As great as the extra money is, it's it's just not going to be worth it. It won't be. It won't be. You will, you you're right. You won't see uh, mom and pop landlords where they just buy one house, rent it, so they got a nice nest egg uh, in the future. It's just too much. Yeah. Too much headaches. And people and people are turning. You got good tenants turning into really bad tenants, uh, like overnight, and it's and it's surprising. Like they become evil tenants, and and they and, and you could have a great tenant for five years, and all of a sudden they they turn into evilness, and uh, and uh, and it's it, and it's it's sad. It's that that is really sad. And but what's going to happen? It's like it's going to get to a point where it's going to get so bad where it's going to it's 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 going to hurt them in the long run. In the long run it's going to hurt them and they're not going to be able to negotiate anything. They're not and then the landlord tenant board is going to be one week. Listen, you're not paying your rent like like within 6 weeks you're going to be having a sheriff at your door and locking the door and and, and uh, locking you out. So it will that day that day will happen. And uh and when that happens and it's just all the tenants that uh, you know all the bad things that they did that accumulated to to force these landlords uh, a, a lot of uh, desperation with money and situation like lo- people are losing their houses because tenants aren't paying and plus they're damaging the house it's not a, it's not a, it's not a good thing not a good thing well that's the other issue about this uh, about this too like you have tenants who in the short term are benefiting by not paying rent right and then you know goes to the landlord and, and tenant board it gets delayed for months and all that time you know, they're not paying rent, they're not leaving, but in the long term, years down the road, how are they going to get a place to stay? Because that's going to be, that's going to stay with them forever. It, it will, it will. There, there'll be a record of it and, and it's going to, it's going to affect them. They don't realize it's going to affect them. So you, like that tenant, uh, like that, that got out with, uh, that got 13,000. I mean, maybe it didn't go to the landlord tenant board because the guy negotiated, but all those ones that go to the landlord tenant board, they're they're gonna have a hard time finding a place. They're gonna end up. Mm-hmm. They are not gonna end up being. And and you know you still can go collections after them, and and if you file a, a collection after them, uh, that collection stays stays with you forever until you pay it. So and it, when you want to get a cell phone or a car, maybe get on your feet or anything to say, hey, listen, you got a collection of ten thousand dollars. Well, guess what? That throws that car payment. That throws him not getting a car, and and he's gonna be in trouble all the time. So. You, you gotta you, you know you gotta be careful uh before you start uh you know messing and, and taking advantage of other other people so we got a load of stats to get to in hamilton and burlington and niagara in terms of sales and sale prices and some really interesting numbers and maybe we'll start naturally this is the Gulf Free real estate show hamilton edition we'll start in hamilton where sales were kind of up and down from january to july Um, Sale price, very intriguing. Uh, In January of 2024, the uh, median sale price was $715,000, went up to a high of $758,000 in March with that uh, pretty warm and and lucrative spring market. But now it's down to $710,000 in July, basically the starting point where we saw uh, the home prices in Hamilton uh, back in January. Uh, the first six months, what did what, you make of the first half of the year? Yeah, I, I was shocked. And in all, all markets, the market uh, unit sales are down. And also at, uh, a benchmark price, median price is, is, is uh, down. And, uh, and I don't know, like, obviously, we're in the middle of the summer right now. But, uh, but surprising, it, uh, it, it's actually, it's just floating. Like, we're, we're just on a, 
just floating. So timing right now, I'm going to tell you, is is a good time if you're a buyer buying, looking to buy a house because, you know, it has it has dropped a bit. Now, like I said, you know, uh, Rick, all the time, I said February, March, great time to put your house on the market. If, if, yeah. if you know, but now now it's it's swung back to uh, just kind of balancing itself out. And and who knows? And I got a feeling, my gut feeling, it's hard to tell. Now there's a difference this year because if they bring the interest rates down another quarter point in September and another quarter and another and another quarter point in uh um another quarter point in um what do you call it let's say October or November that's a full mm -hmm. one point that they brought it down this year that will stir the market up so normally yeah. uh in certain areas if you buy a house in December January um the market seemed to soften up and you can negotiate more and and you could do well but it it, it who knows what's going to happen this year? But right now, um, I, I do feel that if you're a buyer to, to buy, like Hamilton, you're right. Like even even uh, unit sales are are down in uh, in uh, uh, July. Now the, the numbers could change because all the all the numbers aren't officially in yet. It could, but it, it'll be just maybe three to five num uh, more. But but look at this on the next page. We got months of inventory in Hamilton, four point two months of inventory. And look mm -hmm. at that. Earlier this year, we only had 2.9, 2.4 months, 2.5 months, two and a half months. You know what I mean? So inventory levels are high right now. Very high, very high. And Burlington, boy, they're getting right down, back down again. Burlington right now, jump in, everybody, because Burlington, you can probably buy something next year and make maybe hundred to $200,000 on that house if you buy right now in Burlington. Just negotiate yourself a good deal. Um, sale, mm -hmm. Sales are way down. Unit sales in Burlington are, are down to, like it was 167 uh, uh, unit sales for the month of July. And, and the benchmark price is 946000 in uh, in uh, Burlington. Now, at the height, we were at a million sixty thousand uh, just in May. So, so it, uh, for some reason, it's just cooled right off in Burlington. Now, uh, and now, and Burlington also has uh, 3.6 months of inventory. And February, March, they were at, uh, in April, they were at uh, 1.6 months of inventory. So there you go. And that'll happen again next year uh, in February, March, April uh, um, with low inventory levels. Niagara, same thing. Um, uh, they, they've been hovering around the 600, uh, the 630 to 6, uh, 6, uh, 100 mark. Uh, sale, unit sales are down, not as much as other areas, but but the benchmark price in Niagara uh, is six hundred thirty thousand. Now, in January it was six hundred and fifteen. Then it dropped in February to six hundred three. Then and then it spiked up to six hundred and fifty. So everybody thinks. I'll tell you. Everybody says, Rob. They say there's going to be a crash. The crash happened. That's why we're floating up and down by these small percentage marks. And, and it's not going to crash any more than it has. It's it's stabilized and it's hanging in there. And that's it. Uh, because, you know, um, uh, also Niagara, six six months of inventory. That's pretty high. That's higher than hmm. than anywhere in the southern Ontario. Brantford, uh, sales are down and their benchmark price, medium price is 590000 and they were at the height of five hundred ninety-five thousand earlier in January this year, and or six hundred twenty-two thousand, and now they've dropped down. Uh, so it's hard to tell. Like I mean, we've had two interest rate drops in the in the last three three months, and uh, that's a half a point. It didn't move the needle yet. It didn't move the needle. What, like I said, once they do another quarter, and then a, and then a, and then they do another quarter after that. And it's a full one percent. You will see people jumping in and doing that, and it's going to spike up the market. It's going to spike up the prices of houses. So that's why I'm saying, and if you're a buyer, get in there right now. Get in there, and and I'll tell you, earlier this year, earlier this year, if you had your house on the market, you would have, you would have, and you did get receive an offer. That was your best offer right there, right now. That was your best offer. And so if you if you blew that offer off, you're, you're just, you may have to wait a year, another, another year before you get that again and, and see what happens. So. Yeah. And, and, the, and the stats show that like the spring market was really uh, active in terms of not only unit sales, but the price, that was the highest price we've seen. Like in Hamilton from, from January to July, the price has actually gone down. The median price has gone down $5,000 in Burlington. It's gone up 55,000, but again, at a very affordable comparable to the spring, $946,000 Niagara, 
from January to July, the price has gone up $15,000. And in Brantford, it's gone down 5K. So really, at the end of the day, flat when you think about it. Five, ten thousand, fifty-five thousand. Not the end of the world. Do you think this is kind of the new norm for the first half of the year? It's going to, you know, the spring market's always been the market, but to to not see the price kind of be relatively the same from the spring to the fall, or at least as we approach the fall, is that kind of the new norm? I, you know what, my gut feeling is we're probably experiencing a little bit of the same thing in the '90s, and it just like it did a drop and then it just stayed there. It just hovered and hovered and hovered. Now, yeah. h- how long will it hover like this for? I don't know, but I, I mean, it is good for the buyers, and uh, and if you're a seller and you bought in the high market, you're going to pay the price. Either you stay there or you're going to take the loss. There's nothing not, nothing you can do about. It. But I do feel okay. I do feel. That in 2026 and 27, if you got a house and you stick and stay in it for another couple of years, you will benefit from it. It will, it will spike again because, um, and like like we're going to talk about the housing starts are low. They got to pick up. If they don't pick up, uh, you're going to see real estate go up like crazy in uh, in in Canada or even just in Ontario, southern Ontario. Well, and that's a question I have in regards to interest rates. So they've already gone down twice now, two months in a row, June and July. The next announcement, I believe, is in September. If there's another quarter point, and, and let's just say there's another quarter point either later on this year or early next year, so that's a full percentage point. The interest rate from the Bank of Canada would be 4% at that point. How many more homes or new listings versus new buyers do you expect? Do you expect way more new listings, which could increase uh, you know, months of inventory to maybe numbers we haven't seen in a long, long time? Yeah, I think it'll it'll be definitely better, but not like crazy better. I do think that it's going to spark up the, the market. Uh, the Bank of Canada is really, really tiptoeing their way to make sure it doesn't spark uh, crazy inflation. And But they, yeah. need, they need to do it because they're not building houses and there, there's a shortage of home. And, you, and I'll tell you, it's funny how this operates uh, and it happens in the real estate market week by week, month by month, markets change every week. And you could have a house on the market for three weeks and all of a sudden you get multiple offers on the, on, on that third weekend. And you're like, well, this house has been here for three weeks. Where were the buyers before? It, it's crazy like that. And the same thing is going to happen when they start dropping the interest rates. People are start going to jump in. Housing prices are going to start climbing a little bit and, and, and there'll be a spike. I'm telling you, there will be a spike. So, uh, and people say, well, I'm waiting for interest rates to drop. Just get in there, buy the house, do a short term, like, you know, uh, variable mortgage and then lock in on a on a five-year term after that uh but i know sometimes first-time buyers it's hard they want you to lock in on a five five-year term with five percent down all that kind of stuff they banks have all these stipulations and, and you know if, if you're a first-time buyer and all that kind of stuff but right now if you can get in get in in the market you'll benefit in the two two and a half years from now guaranteed i know that yeah, so we were in Burlington, and uh, I had the BIA. I, I met up with them, and they asked me um, if I wanted to sponsor the um, uh, um, movie night in Burlington at Spencer Park. And I go, wow. And they have that every Tuesday night. And uh, I'm like, oh, that's awesome, because I used to put movie nights on, and, you know, weather's always a factor and everything like that. Mm-hmm. We would, ra- yeah. you know, raise money for, uh, you know, the food banks and stuff like that. So I said to them, listen – this was uh, on a Friday that I was talking to them, and uh, and and so the following Tuesday was the movie night was Christmas in July at Spencer's Park. I said, "Yeah, I'll, I'll sponsor it." And then I said, "And then so that means I was, I'm going to bring a tent up and everything." I said, "I'll even bring a Santa." And they go, "Really?" I says, "Yeah, I'll have Santa, so people <laughs> could take pictures and everything, and we'll get Santa. You know, have a summer summer Santa. You know, what I mean, like he's not going to be dressed up in all the big red big boots and everything." So, um, and uh, so I called my Santa that I use. <laughs> he looks like real Santa. <laughs> Haven't talked to him be- since before, before COVID. And, uh, and he used to, this guy used to do commercials for Canadian Tire as Santa. And, oh, wow. uh, yeah, yeah. So he, this guy is the real thing. He's the real deal. When you see him, you're like, whoa, the, the, it, he looks like, you know, the real Santa. And, uh, so anyway, so I call him up right there in front when I went with the BIA on the phone. At, I was in my Burlington office, and uh, and I said, "Hey, are you able to to you know be at uh, uh, Spencer's Park on uh, 
Tuesday, Tuesday night. I just said, we just need you for a couple hours. He's looking, he goes, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. And, and B, the BIA was really thrilled about that. And so, so we had him there, but you know what? I, I, I didn't see him. So anyway, we had to pick up his chair. He's got a big Santa chair. And so we picked that up. Usually he brings it himself. And then he calls me like, I don't know, a couple hours before he says, you know what? I, I had a car accident. And oh, I, no. yeah, I, I, no, like, like a week, two weeks ago or a week ago. And he goes, I don't oh, have okay. a car. And, uh, and I go, okay, no problem. It says, I says, I'll pick you up. I didn't want to, I, I didn't want to have any, any, uh, Ubers, uh, pick him up or anything. Cause I want to make sure he got there. <laughs> so I'm going to go, I'm going <laughs> to do this task myself. So I go to East <laughs> Hamilton, pick him up. And you know what? I haven't seen him probably the, the last, cause we usually do Santa pictures and we're, we're contacting him at the same time to do Santa pictures, but I don't know. I, um, he, he, when I pulled up, he was pretty frail. Like he lost a lot of weight and uh, oh, no. yeah, he was pretty frail. And, and, uh, and I'm going, Whoa, I go, I go, I don't know. This guy's going to, you know, like make it like he couldn't even walk like six steps. Eh? And I'm like, are you all right? Is everything going to be okay? And he goes, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, all right. And then, uh, so, uh, we, uh, I, I bring him to, uh, Spencer's park, you know, I let him sit in the car there for about half an hour, just uh, in the air conditioning car. So he doesn't have to be outside. And, uh, we put him there. He's all good. He's you know, he's just sitting in the chair, enjoying himself. And, you know, people are sitting on, on his lap, you know, taking pictures and everything like that. It was really, really, really good. Um, and then, uh, uh, one of our, uh, uh, uh people that works with me, uh, drove him home and uh and i'm thinking so i'm thinking i think we may have to find another santa i don't know if this guy's <laughs> gonna make it like even you know but i, I couldn't believe but he lost a lot of weight he must have he must have had some some kind of uh uh illness of some sort and uh, he's not the same guy that uh we saw him before COVID, and um uh, hmm. but uh i i you know but we're gonna talk to him and see what we can do but he was did a great job and and i'll tell you like I love this thing at Spencer's Park. So if you ever on Tuesday night, you got nothing to do, you know, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes people that sponsor, they have popcorn there, coffee and stuff, but bring your own, uh, bring your own stuff, bring a blanket and, and, uh, and watch, uh, watch a movie. The last movie, I think is the 20th of, uh, uh, the last one is the 20th of August. I think it is, or something like that a Tuesday and they're playing yeah. Top Gun. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, if it's wow. the, I'm not sure if it's the new one or the old one, but they're both good movies, and uh, I definitely want to go see Top Gun out in the out in the, in the Spencer's Park and hang out and just you know have some popcorn, enjoy it on a blanket. It's a great, yeah, it's a great place, especially in the summer with the breeze coming off the lake, and you know the park's spectacular. Great sight lines. Obviously, the acoustics are great. They always have you know uh, you know rib fest there and concerts there. That's a great place. Oh, absolutely! It's 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 fantastic. That I'm going to tell you that downtown core now at, at on Brand Street, and and also I think it's Locust and and uh, Elizabeth. I think they they've done a phenomenal job downtown uh, uh, Burlington. Yeah. Like they they got great patio uh, places. Like for you know if you want to go for drinks and stuff like that and, and food. Yeah. Uh, great 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 place great place. But I also want to tell you a story. So I'm, I I I was called to go on a, an evaluation to visit this house, right? An older house and everything. So I, I bring yeah. in, a, I brought another agent with me, uh, a lady agent. She came with me. And, um, so we're looking through the house and, uh, as we were look, going to the basement, I made, I made sure the, the guy goes down the basement first. Cause, and I looked down the basement and I'll tell you, Rick, it's, it's, like something you'd see in the movie. It's like, you know, when you stare down a basement and you look down and you think, mm -hmm. you're thinking, you know what? I may not come back out of this basement. <laughs> <laughs> I may not come back. I'm like, and I turn around, I turn around to the agent behind me. I, and, and I said to her, I go, Karen, I don't know. I don't think we're coming back out of this basement. <laughs> I, go, <laughs> I go, it's one of those feelings you get when you walk into this, like something you see in a scary movie. So anyway, yeah. anyways, now did she have the same feeling? she had the same feeling as i did oh, we both like dude. i turned around when i said it to her she kind of like oh my god i had that same feeling like you just <laughs> like it's it's just like this is the thing about realtors that we go to people's houses you don't know what's beyond that door what you're going into and you know what i mean so but this was a this was like it was it, the funny thing is this isn't like like four like five six o'clock at night so it's daylight outside but when you're looking down this basement it didn't look like it had any windows it was just a scary looking stairs staircase going down and uh and i just like 
Wow. I'm having a really uh, funny feeling about this basement. That's why I'll tell you, as a realtor, never, never, ever uh, walk down the stairs first. Let the homeowner do it first. Because if you're going to get whacked on the head, at least you don't want to get whacked on the head, <laughs> him behind you. And then all of a sudden you're, you're stuck in a basement and it's like the show Misery where they break your ankles yeah. and you can't get away. <laughs> So yeah, good, good philosophy on that one. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so how did it turn out? Was it the basement from hell or uh, no, it wasn't too bad, but it just, but just the staircase is just something. I mean, the guy should put that on the movie list. Hey, like I got the, I got a scary staircase basement. You know what I mean? Like it's just, a, <laughs> it was just a weird, weird, uh, staircase going down to the basement. It's just something you, you know, like it was just kind of, even though the lights were on, it was kind of dark and scary. Just, just the, the, the pathway going down the, the the basement. So it was just, uh, just something. Uh, it, it just hits your hits your mind, eh? And it just gives you a little mm -hmm. bit of chills in your back, you know. So what was the rest of the house like? The rest of the house was good. It was an older house. Uh, it uh, you know it needed some work and stuff like that. And uh, but yeah, it's definitely gonna. We'll definitely sell it. And uh, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, yeah, it was a good house. Uh, it's, it's a bungalow. We're probably uh, listing at uh, three ninety nine nine. It's in in the Niagara area, so it's a, it's a it's a nice house. Yeah, not a bad house. Needs some work, but uh, it, it was good. It, uh, but you know, they'll be able to enjoy the scary basement going down. <laughs> <laughs> so, is that a feature you're you're not going to highlight in the listing? I will not highlight that feature. I'll just say it needs a little bit of work. That's it. <laughs> Br bring your uh, hammer and paintbrush and you'll have a nice yeah. house. But uh, I would advise to put a light bulb just at the above, <laughs> above the uh, basement uh, door so that at least you could feel like you got a little more comfort going down down the stairs. <laughs> but but it's amazing, though, like a lot of times like we walk into these houses and you just don't know what you're you're walking into. And, you know, like we're walking to strangers' homes. We're meeting them the first time. Now, it's very yeah. rare that anybody, you know, gets hurt or, 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 or gets murdered or anything like that. And it has happened. It has happened. Yeah. Like, I mean, in the last probably 25 years, I probably heard one or two cases maybe in, in, uh, in Ontario or Canada. But, yeah, you got you to be, be careful, especially for women. Uh, you know, they got to they gotta, they gotta be careful. And it's uh, sometimes you have to bring uh, uh, an associate with you just to just to be on the safe side you know you got to be very careful i'm kind of surprised to be honest i'm kind of surprised that's not like mandated like two people have to go when you're meeting a client for the first time because that, again you, you never know you you don't you like you don't know what you're meeting and and i'll, and I'll tell you i've met some like different people and mm -hmm. uh like like i'm a guy like I, I think i can handle myself but but you really don't know what's coming at you from behind or whatever like you don't know the house you're sitting there and some guy can surprise you in any way like if there's any kind of mental illness of somebody going on uh or whatever that sure. that that can uh, can attack you so so you always gotta you always gotta keep your alert on you all, you, you never know you just gotta you know, like if you're sitting down, you you know, try to sit down in in a, in a chair that at the kitchen where there, nobody's can sneak up behind you. Not, I'm not saying it. You know, it's like that. Like I said, nothing's ever happened to me in in, in mm -hmm. the 25 years of me being in this business. But it's always that one time, right? It's just you know what I mean. You got to play safe all the time. You always got to play defensively. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, it would be like no different for, you know, a contractor, if you're an HVAC installer or you're doing some handiwork at someone's home who's hired you, like you have to be vigilant in terms of going into the home, making sure everything is safe and, you know, having a little bit of trust of, uh, of the person who's opening the door. But yeah, there have been instances, as, as you've mentioned in the past, where things didn't go right for uh, the individual who was uh, visiting the house. Uh, don't forget, you can listen to our show online through Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and many more. Just search for the Golfy Real Estate Show in your favorite podcast platform. Don't forget to hit that follow button so you never miss an episode. Thank you for listening to the Golfy Real Estate Show. We're back next Saturday at 9 on 900 CHML. Yeah, picking the wrong realtor, that'd be a big mistake. That cost me money. Hi, Rob here. And hey, we get it. We get that the right realtor makes all the difference. My advice, talk to three realtors, including one from the Golfy team. Compare and you'll see no one gets results like Golfy because of the millions we invest in marketing, getting you the most money in the least amount of time. The Golfy team, Golfy gets it sold. Pick the right realtor. Just Google Golfy.